The amazing thing about M.C. Escher is that he represents the perfect coming together of mathematics and art. These are two different worlds, but in his work, they're brought together as one. Born in the Netherlands in 1898, Moritz Cornelius Escher had no formal training in mathematics. He began his professional life as a graphic artist, making woodcuts and lithographs. As a young man, while visiting the Alhambra in Spain, he became fascinated by the geometric decoration of the Moorish tiles. It would be a defining moment for Escher as an artist. From then on, he would spend much of his life experimenting with an area of mathematics known as tessellation. Tessellation is about regular patterns that divide the plane. That means that they effectively they split the plane up into lots of little tiles, and those tiles fit together perfectly. They don't overlap and they don't leave any gaps. It may seem that the premise of tiling a plane or surface with regular repeating units is a very simple idea, but it's absolutely fundamental to mathematics, and the reason is that it's about symmetry. What Escher does with this rather simple, stark, abstract mathematics is to add a human dimension and a fantastical dimension. He has little animals, little lizards, dragon-like creatures, funny little men, goblins, and things like that. And he uses those for the shapes of his tiles. M.C. Escher is known as the father of modern tessellations. He created 137 unique designs and extended tessellations into works of astonishing and puzzling beauty. Today, you're gonna to make your own tessellation creature. You can choose between the spider, the duck, the lizard, or the turtle. I'm gonna show you how to tessellate the turtle today. First, I'm gonna put the stencil in the middle of the blank part of your square one page. This is gonna be known as your hero tessellation. We're gonna use a magic marker or a pen to trace all the way around the outer edges of your stencil. Make sure to press down really well because you don't want your marker to go underneath the stencil. There you go, there's the outer edges. Now there's these intersections of the stencil that are gonna be up to you if you want to use them in your art project. I'm gonna use them in mine today. So I'm gonna trace around all of that. And now I'm gonna put away my marker and I'm gonna to opt to switch over to a black colored pencil to tessellate this turtle all the way around the hero turtle. And I can see right here, his head should fit in that, right like that, just like a puzzle piece. So I'm gonna start there and continue to trace around my stencil and then move the stencil around as needed until my page is full. You'll notice parts of this video are sped up. That's to make sure you have time to complete your project in the classroom. There you go. I did not do the inner part of my stencils on the outer tessellations. Before you start coloring in your project, please take a moment to write your name in nice bold letters next to your hero tessellation. You can even include the year if you would like. Mind you, there's no right or wrong way to do this. When you fill in these stencils, this is completely up to your artistic choices. They're how you want to color it in and the things you want to put inside the stencils. I wanna make the center turtle look kind of like a cartoon turtle. So that's what my goal is and what I'm working towards. You may have a totally different idea for how you want to color yours in. I like to use a lot of colors. So you notice I'm not going for a typical turtle, but kind of a super colorful one. Um, and I just have these little spots at the top that I need to finish out. I'm choosing to put some scales around the legs and the head and on the tail. So I'm gonna use my darker green to create a scale pattern all over the turtle body and, you know, color in some eyelids. Once again, this is sped up. I cannot draw this fast. There you go. I have all of my awesome scales in place. And now I'm gonna go back and add in a few details so that you can tell which of these parts are feet and which one is the tail. So it kind of helps when you add in those things. Um, to define the sections of my turtle. Next, I'm using light green to color over all of those amazing scales that I put into place. 
And now that the coloring part is mostly done, I'm going to go back to my marker and add in a couple of details like pupils in the eyes to give this turtle a little bit more personality. And now it's kind of time to spin it around, add my last few details, and my hero tessellation is complete. Now I need to work with these outer panels. And what I did, I counted that I had six of them and thought about things that dealt with sea turtles and the ocean and I actually made a list um, just so I could get my thoughts in order so I decided on this top right one that I was going to make a little beach island kind of like the beaches that turtles lay their eggs on mind you that I have never drawn a beach island before so I am just grabbing my colors and going for it and committing to this plan um, lots and lots of color can make up for maybe not having the most experience at drawing that. Now down here, I've seen about what turtles eat. I actually Googled it. A lot of them like to eat crabs and they like to eat fish. Um, so I decided to make a little panel full of crabs and fish. I like to mix up two patterns to kind of fill in a spot better. It's a little bit more movement in that area now. And then I also heard they like to eat jellyfish. So I decided to make some cartoonish style jellyfish over here, blending in lots of different colors and putting little bubble dots all around to make my pattern a little bit more fun. Then up here, the sun, lots of sun out there. So I decided to do a super wiggly, squiggly orange sun mixed in with some dark purple to really make it pop using contrasting colors. Then on my next panel, I was like, I'm gonna make some tortoise shell. I don't know how to make tortoise shell, but I figured I would just do the best that I could because it's one of the ideas I came up with. I mixed a lot of fun colors, and even if you don't know what it is, like I said, a lot of fun colors can make up for lack of experience. I depend on that quite a bit. And then for my final panel, I went back to that beach theme and decided to add in a couple of types of shells and some little dots of sand. And then once again, brought in some fun colors. I did a little bit lighter color up here, just so that everything isn't super dark. And now what we have left are these two little spots at the bottom. I'm just choosing to do some color patterns using colors that I've used in other panels. Um, and that's about it. Didn't do a whole lot of thought on those spots, but I definitely wanted them filled in so that there's no blank spaces on my page. And that's it. That's my turtle tessellation. <laughs> I hope you enjoy making your own. And since you guys are fourth and fifth grade, I'm going to show you a second tessellation that I did. This one was using the spider, but I chose to look at the shape as a whole and use a little bit of that MC Escher whimsy to create something that wasn't as obvious as making a spider. So I kind of did a little bit of a warrior mask and used a lot of bright colors. I'm showing you this so that you know you don't have to do a spider because someone says it's a spider. Look at the shape, see what you think it looks like. And I'm gonna make a second character to tessellate him with. And I chose to go with kind of a silly upside down tentacled goblin. Yes, a tentacled goblin. And I went with a lot of green. You may not think of a warrior being matched with a goblin, but like I said, use your whimsy, think outside the box if that suits you. Because I also did do the spider tessellation just as a really super cool spider as well. But I wanted to give you guys an option if you wanted to look at the shape and create something that others may not expect. So that's my spider. Here are a few more creative examples that I'm showing you with the hopes that it will inspire you as you start your Square One project today. I can't wait to see what you create.